Hello everyone, this is supposed to act like a shield between the different electronic components inside of the amp. Here we are making holes for the amplifier board to be mounted on the aluminium heatsink. To give myself some more space, I made this bracket to move the power supply off the heatsink just a little bit. Here I'm installing four brackets inside of the amplifier, centering the heatsink. And here I am making marks on the back side of the amp for the components. And guess what? Cotton holes. Cotton deep holes. The binding post has little notches I have to cut out for. The power socket is meant for a thinner cabinet, so here I'm removing some aluminium. This is to mark which amp is to which RCA connection. Normally you would write left and right. couldn't just make a black box so here I'm making a interesting looking heatsink for the front of the amp. This is a router bit on a drill just to make it a bit more safe. making threads on the front and countersinking the heat sink for the front. Subscribe if you like to see more. Like if you love it. Paper. Punch! Heat sink framing. Early in the workshop, I'm setting things right. Wires and magnets all through the night. Gotta build my amp strong, make thunder and roar. Speakers that'll shake you right to your core. Turn up the volume, feel the power come through. Crank up the bass, let the treble hit you. Turn on my brow as I solder each line. Every connection gotta be just fine. Testing the frequencies, adjusting the tone. Creating a masterpiece for my hand. This is a relay that can be activated by 12 volts, letting 220 volts AC power running through. If you want to know how I wired it, I made a schematic. You can just pause the video and take a look if you need to. I want to wire from 12 volt mini jack in the back to the relay and to the connection in front. So it lights up when the trigger is engaged and the amplifier is turned on. I then let the 220 volts pass through the relay and the switch up front. So if either is turned on, the power amplifier will turn on. The blue and brown wire is 220 volts AC, while the black one is 
12 volts DC. The relay is basically just a switch that is turned on by the 12 volts input. The only downside I found to this configuration is that the light only shows you that the trigger is engaged. So you can still turn the amp on on the front and the light will not come on. This relay needs two 12 volts plus coming in, one to engage and one to power on the relay. These amplifier boards come as balanced, but you can convert them to RCA inputs instead. I didn't realize just how small these components were when ordering, but in the end I managed to solder it anyways. <laughs> you basically have to remove two small resistors, solder one of them in another place, buy an up amp and install that. Then you have RCA connections. Cleaning with isopol alcohol. perfect no detail left behind in the quiet workshop glow dreams are designed crafting soundscapes one wire at a time turn up the volume feel the power come through crank up the bass let the treble hit you Smithering thermal compound all over the place under the power supplies and under the amps in the front and the heat sink on the front to get a good heat dissipation. Here comes the infamous mini jack trigger input and power combined with switch and fuse. RCAs. And as we said in Danish, the raisin in the sausage end, the binding posts.
when you use the amplifier as unbalanced. Take the minus and the ground and put them together, as I have done here on the ICA inputs. And of course use a heat gun. Don't be like me. And here I did smell some thermal paste under. Actually, it's still coming out, so that's nice. Now we all know you can't sound dim or something like this on YouTube, but it doesn't mean that we don't want to try. Regarding the sound, it's amazing. Thanks for watching.